what the okay so i published a paper in uh, 2016 on um on the on the what i call the neuropsychiatric effect so some of these are, are just basically neurological effects but uh can't sleep tired all the time depressed uh fatigue uh, dysesthesia has to do with, uh, with sensory perception, sense, that sensory organs don't work properly. And, you know, they, they are not all uh, impacted in the same individual. Concentration, attention, dysfunction, memory changes, that is the memory doesn't work well. Um, dizziness, irritability, loss of appetite and body weight. And by the way, you can also get increases in body weight <laughs> as well from EMFs under different conditions. Restlessness, anxiety, nausea, skin burning, tingling, uh, dermographism is a peculiar thing where your skin is very sensitive to, uh, to touching it. Uh, tinnitus, um, one of the things that's been, so most of these have been studied uh, in epidemiology, although the evidence for causation is very strong, uh, even from the epidemiology. Uh, but the one thing that's been studied most experimentally is EEG changes. There are 38 different studies that have been done, experimental studies where different EMFs have been used and where uh, the, uh, there are changes in the EEGs in the human brain. And, uh, and so, you know, and those, of course, measure the electrical activity in the human brain, which is the most important thing that goes on in the brain. And uh, so what's clear is experimentally, EMFs, low intensity EMFs of the sort that the industry claims can't possibly do anything are producing changes in the electrical activity in the brain. And those in turn, presumably, are involved in producing all of these, uh, all of these kinds of, uh, of, of effects that we see. Um, and, uh, and so this was you know, the review that I published, but there are also 11 additional reviews that found similar sets of effects, not necessarily all of these, but, but uh, a substantial number of them uh, from EMF effects from different kinds of EMFs, including uh, cell phones, including, and five of them involve uh, uh, reviews of people living near cell phone towers, having these kinds of neuropsychiatric effects. So, um, so there should be no question that cell phone tower radiation impacts our brains. Now, um, back in the 1970s and 1980s, uh, there were a whole series of occupational exposure studies done on effects of occupational EMF occupational exposures on people. And, uh, and, and let me say back in those days, there were essentially no uh, 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 common EMF exposures out in the general environment. So you didn't have to worry about what other EMFs they're getting exposed to. They're just getting exposed to the EMFs in the, in the, uh, associated with their occupation. And, and, and so one can look at what happens in, in those situations. And what was found uh, in a number of those studies is that the effects are cumulative. That is, you start effects slowly over time, but you get, they get more and more severe with time to exposure to a particular level and type of, uh, uh, of EMF. And so uh, that, tells you, um, that tells you some very important things. And it tells you specifically that you, you develop these. And sometimes, sometimes they took years to develop. Sometimes they took months to develop. And of course, now we have many other things where things tend to work, you know, at least in some cases uh, more rapidly. But, um, um, but what, you know, but there, there, there are two things about this. One is that we are insensitive to things that occur slowly to us. We're not aware of them. And so 
uh, it's, it's very important that these studies have been done because they clearly show causation and they sure clearly show that you can develop things over time and you, they can become more and more severe with time. And so when you have these different kinds of, of neuropsychiatric effects occurring from EMS and, and they get worse and worse with time uh, to the same type of uh, exposures, then of course, what's gonna happen when you introduce much, much newer, more highly pulsed and much more uh, uh, biologically active uh, EMFs is that things are gonna get much, much worse, much faster. And uh, um, <clears throat> so I am very concerned that um, we are on a process which is leading to a crash of our collective brain function. And everything in our society is based on our collective brain function. So, you know, we're just going to go into utter chaos if this continues in the way that we are going. And, uh, and so this is uh, uh, something that, th this is one of my nightmare scenarios. It's one of eight of them. And uh, it may be the, the worst of them, or maybe not. Um, so, okay, okay. So let's talk about Alzheimer's disease and neurodegeneration. And I, so I published this uh, article just a, a little while ago. It just came out in Alzheimer, current Alzheimer research and uh, on uh, how uh, low intensity uh, EMFs act via uh, BGCC activation to cause very early onset Alzheimer's disease and 18 different distinct types of evidence. And so we don't have time to talk about all those 18, but we're going to talk about about half of them, I guess. Um, so, okay. So this thing starts, um, oh, I think my numbering got screwed up here. Uh, it starts with the confluence of, of two findings. One is what's called the calcium hypothesis of Alzheimer's disease. And that's been published uh, repeatedly over the last 25 years. And what it argues is that, um, is that we have uh, a, okay, so I see somebody's raising a hand. What do I do? Click on it. Okay. Okay, I just unmuted you. Marcus? Hello? Yes, hello. You hear me? I hear you, yes. Okay. Dr. Pell, I, uh, I didn't intend this question in the middle of the presentation, but now that you uh, that I get the opportunity, I will ask. Okay. Are you aware of the worldwide hum? Uh, many people uh, over the world perceive this as a low throbbing, a low frequency noise. Do you think there's any relationship with EMFs? I, I guess I'm not aware of that. Um... Hmm. There's uh, there's many accounts of yeah. uh, people perceiving low frequency noise without an Please. actual source. Okay, 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 okay. So I can answer that. Um, there is a phenomenon that's well described called microwave hearing, in which people hear things where there's no actual sound. And where the uh, the EMFs are are uh, almost certainly interacting directly with the hearing mechanism, and so there there is that does exist. It's been shown to exist, and uh, and so it, it it may be involved here. Okay. Um, that's that's all I can say. Now, I mean, the the, the properties of of, of microwave uh, radiation, which is usually used, uh, are different from the properties of sound. In and so, 
you can usually tell that it's not a real sound as a consequence of that, but that's about, that's about all I can say, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go back and, and mute you again. And, uh, okay, so let's, uh, okay, so we have a confluence of two findings. One is the calcium hypothesis of Alzheimer's disease basically argues excessive intracellular calcium is the central cause of Alzheimer's disease. And the other is, of course, EMFs acting by a VGCC activation where the, the first thing that happens in the cells of our bodies is we get increases in intracellular calcium. So that, that makes a strong argument. Um, and there's a second uh, observation which I, I, I uh, um, documented in my paper, which is that both EMFs and, and excessive intracellular calcium cause each of the most important changes that are involved in causing Alzheimer's disease. And that includes all the things that are involved in producing the, uh, the amyloid beta protein, uh, but also other things which are involved in producing uh, other, other features of Alzheimer's disease, which are shared with other, uh, re uh, other uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So, so calcium may have roles not only in Alzheimer's, but also in, in all the neurodegenerative disease central roles. And um, so um, the, in Alzheimer's, VGCC activity itself has, has been shown to be very important in, in causing Alzheimer's disease. This has been shown because uh, genetically caused elevated VGCC activity produces an increased susceptibility to Alzheimer's. And in addition, the VGCC calcium channel blockers are useful uh, for both Alzheimer's prevention and treatment. So, uh, so this, this says it's not just intracellular calcium, but actually the VGCCs have important roles here as well. And, uh, and, uh, We've had, and, and so there are a number of other things, and let me say I'm, I'm, I'm giving you these, uh, these are among the more important of the 18 different types of evidence, but they're not the whole, the whole sum of them. Uh, but we have had in recent years, a decrease in the age of onset of Alzheimer's, and that's uh, difficult to explain, but that is explained, I think, by the EMFs. The timing of this decrease corresponds at least roughly to the timing of the increase in EMFs in our environment. Um, EMF occupational exposures are linked to increased incidence of Alzheimer's. Um, young people develop digital dementia from long exposures to cell phone and Wi-Fi radiation. So these we're talking about in some cases, teenagers uh, or, or, or people in their twenties developing dementia from exposures to cell phones and Wi-Fi. Now, we don't know what the physiology is in these young people developing digital dementia. We just know that they do it and uh, that it happens. So that's something that is something which is, uh, uh, you know, is obviously of great concern. Um, EMF pulses in rats, so let me say there are a lot of studies that have been done on Alzheimer's in animals where, you, where the animals develop things that are essentially identical to Alzheimer's in humans. And, uh, and, and rats are one of the organisms which can do this. Uh, if you give a series of EMF pulses to rats given within one day and even within one second of one day, just on one day, okay, just once, and these can cause very early onset Alzheimer's in rats. So, so uh, this would be, they, they occurred about 20 month old rats. They developed these Alzheimer's. Um, this, is, this would be approximately the equivalent of 42 year old humans developing uh, near universal Alzheimer's. And so um, this is a very early onset Alzheimer's. In rats, and the only thing you need to do to convert perfectly normal rats into very early onset Alzheimer's rats is give them a series of pulses 
within one day and EMF pulses within one day and even within one second of one day. That's all you need to do to convert from one to the other. Um, that's, uh, you know, absolutely stunning. Uh, the same group that, that published this, um, I'm sorry, and, and all of this is, is, is discussed in, in, in detail in my paper. So um, you can look at that. I don't know why. Oh, why is this thing not going? Um, oh, okay. I guess I can do it that way. Okay. Um, now, when the same group, instead of giving them pulses in one day, started in one day, and they, they started at two months of age. Two months of age are like late adolescent rats, okay, because rats develop very, very quickly. And uh, um, instead of giving them these pulses in one day, uh, they gave them the pulses. They started on the same day, but they gave them once a day. Then instead of coming down with Alzheimer's at 20 month old rats, they come down to 10 month old rats. So, so basically uh, eight months later, these rats are, uh, are, uh, have extremely early onset Alzheimer's. This would be roughly the equivalent of 21 year old humans developing universal or near universal Alzheimer's simply caused from pulses of EMFs. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else. Um, there was another study that was done. It's a beautiful study. And I don't really have time to talk about it. Uh, it was published by El Suefia et al. in uh, 2008. They did not, so, so these, in the studies that I talked about earlier, they measured things that were Alzheimer's specific in the hippocampus, which is uh, part of the brain that's heavily impacted in Alzheimer's in humans. And uh, in the El Swefi study, they just studied neurodegeneration generally. They did not study anything that was specific for uh, Alzheimer's disease, but they found that very low intensity, this is 3G cell phone radiation, power radiation, um, causes universal massive neurodegeneration in these rats. 34% of the brain cells die in four weeks. Okay, now rats typically live to um, to be about three years old, about thirty six months. So this is about two point seven percent of the lifespan of the rat. They go from being perfectly normal rats to having thirty four percent of their brain cells dead in four weeks. This is absolutely stunning. The other thing that's interesting about the El Swefi study is they showed that this entire uh, the process. They measured 11 different things that were involved in this process of neurodegeneration, and they showed that each of them was greatly lowered by using a VGCC calcium channel block. Each of these 11 things were greatly lowered. So what is going on here? You're getting VGCC activation. It's producing massive universal neurodegeneration in the brains of these rats. It's just incredible. Now, um, you know, there's, there's, uh, obviously if we were as sensitive as the rats, we'd, we'd all be, we, we'd all be gone by now because we're exposed to this kind of radiation all the time. Um, fortunately we're not, but, um, but that doesn't mean that nothing's going on. As I said earlier, we know that these EMFs do change the electrical activity in the human brain. So they're, they're impacting our brains. Um, the animal studies and the human epidemiological studies both suggest that EMFs shorten the latency period in Alzheimer's. Why is that important? Well, the normal latency period in humans is, is thought to be about 25 years. So for instance, in a, in a situation where uh, one, of the, one of the things that can cause Alzheimer's in humans is, is head trauma. So you have a head trauma and it you, typically takes about 25 years for the person to develop Alzheimer's disease. Um, so there's a long latency period involved. 
Um, the latency period appears to be shortened by the EMFs, uh, probably is mo something more like five to 10 years. So, uh, but it's still quite possible then that we have a, a, a new exposure, a new EMF exposure that um, let's, you know, maybe it's 5G, maybe it's something else that's highly pulsed and, and therefore highly biologically active. And, uh, and it could cause universal or near universal, extremely early onset Alzheimer's, but we don't know it yet because we're still within the latency period of Alzheimer's disease. That is a possibility with all of these new kinds of exposures that are coming out all the time. And, uh, and, uh, and yet no one is worrying about it. And it is absolutely stunning. I mean, this is a, uh, so it's quite possible that 5G is doing this. And we don't know it yet. It's quite possible that 4G is doing it. It hasn't been out that long, you know, 10, 11 years, something like that. Um, and we don't know it yet. It's quite possible that uh, smart meters are doing it. And we don't know it yet. So, you know, every time that some new kind of EMF is produced, none of them are tested biologically for safety. And uh, any of them might do this. So this is an absolute nightmare scenario that we're talking about. And it, it is just um, uh, almost impossible to imagine.